Welcome back friends to the shop on a very chilly Friday. I was gonna take the family up skiing today when the sweet loaf woke up with a runny nose, so we canceled that. So we got a lot of stuff going on around here. So I'm having some problems with the front brakes on the old 250. So I'm getting that sorted out. Sorted out. Many of you guys have been asking about that red box in the background. That is a Harvest Right uh, de <laughs> dehydrator. <laughs> freeze dryer that we're going to get started on today. So we'll be sharing that with you. I'm really excited about that. What a great way to preserve food, not relying upon energy uh, and, and the freezers and such uh, for, for long-term storage. So we'll touch on that today as well as uh, decorating the forest and lots of fun stuff. So let's get the brakes wrapped up. I'll show you a couple pro tips that might help you when you're doing your own. Uh, and then we'll move on inside and uh, take a look at that uh, harvest right. The problem I was having with this front brake caliper is it was sticking and the, and the piston was, wouldn't return. It was getting hot, started smoking last time I drove it. So I pulled it in here, replaced this with a new uh, front caliper, uh, and now I've got to bleed it. This is kind of, a, I've heard, is kind of a common problem for Fords, these sticky cylinders, especially for trucks that are not driven a lot and, and sit around. The reason why this happens is because they've used metric bolts on it. Bolts, bolts on, on it. it. The reason for bleeding your brakes is you want to get any air out of the system. Air can be compressed. Imagine a scuba tank. That's the reason why you can put three, 4,000 PSI in a tank because it, it will compress. Fluid you can't compress. So if you get air in the brake system, when you push on the brake pedal, it can be spongy and squishy. So when you put a new component on your brake system, like new calipers, you introduce air into that system. So you need to get it out. I need to take a moment to head off the comments that I know are being typed at this very moment from all of the Dodge or Mopar guys about how much superior their truck is. You know, all these vehicles have their issues. I would take a Ford with a sticky brake caliper over, let's say, a Cummins diesel that needs new ball joints every 30,000 miles any day of the week. If you're a shade tree like me doing your own brakes, typically it's a two-man job. You, When you get ready to bleed it out, you have someone come inside and press down the brake pedal uh, so that you can... Um, uh, bleed the system out and open the valve. So what I do when I'm doing this by myself, just cut yourself a stick that's long enough that you can fully depress the brake pedal and then jam it either under the steering wheel or, or on the seat. And that's basically it guys. Uh, do that uh, a dozen times or so and you should be able to get all the air out of the system. Uh, simple trick that uh, my granddad showed me years ago. Okay, nice to get that done. So I often get asked, who makes the best car? If you're gonna buy a new car, what would I recommend? There's no question the two best car manufacturers uh, presently are Toyota and Ford. Uh, there's, just, there's no argument. I mean, if you, if you question that, if you wanna know the true value of something and what people consider to be precious, go look at the used market. Go look at what a used Toyota, uh, like a Tacoma, uh, or a, uh, do they still make that? Or the uh, Forerunner, what those go for. I look at the Fords, you know, the Raptors and the F-Series pickups and all of that. Um, that's what people hold precious because they're just really great cars. The car, some of the cars that I would stay away from is anything from Mopar, Chrysler, Dodge, uh, Jeep, anything like that. And I would stay away from anything uh, from General Motors um, and anything uh, from Britain or Europe, <laughs> to, to, be, to be honest, unless you're driving it in warranty. But if you want something that, that you can work on yourself, stick with Ford and stick with Toyota. When we bought Mrs. W's uh, 4Runner last year, I was gonna buy a used one and I got to looking around to buy a used one that had 30, 40,000 miles on it, I, I was only saving 4,000, 3,500, maybe $5,000 compared to buying a brand new one. Um, that just gives you an idea of, of how well those vehicles resale. So if I was going to buy a Dodge, I would buy, I wouldn't buy one. <laughs> I'd buy a Ford. Some of you wanted to see the tires that I put on Mrs. W's TRD. These are also Nokian Huckapolitas. They're a light truck or, or a lighter version and they have it. Look at all the studs in them. That's amazing. It's almost like ice racing tires. I'll tell you what, if I wasn't convinced on how good these tires were last night, Miss, or, uh, Jack and I went into town to do our uh, Twitch live stream and we were coming back about 10 o'clock at night. There was an ice warning. It had melted all day long in the entire street, all the way back. All the roads were, were just black ice. These tires, I had the, I didn't have this, I had the adventure van. These tires are so good that I have forgotten to put it in four wheel drive and I drove all the way home talking, gabbing with Jack, not gripping, not worrying about it, just like I was on asphalt. Not until I pulled into the barn did I realize that I was in two wheel drive the whole way. 
amazing tires, but these are, these are the best. Speaking of traction, something you might want to take a look at. This morning I had my, I grabbed the camera and tripod, go out to the shop and it was going to show you guys the brakes. Head up on my shoulder and I stepped out with my tactical clogs and wiped out so bad. I just threw a total yard sale. There was equipment everywhere. I thought I broke my camera. Uh, so I went back in. <laughs> <laughs> licking my wounds and Mrs. W and she brought out these tire chains uh, that she uses for running on ice and man oh man are these things awesome they are uh, just on a rubber kind of a rubber chassis and you just hook them on the front and pull them over any boot or shoe and they've got uh, look at that they've got the little uh, four carbide studs up here and two on the heel man I slapped those things on here I've been running around not having any problems whatsoever you know at my age i'd be worried about falling down on the ice and breaking my hip change of plans guys looks like we're not going to be doing the harvest right video today because we just lost our power when we lose our power that usually is a multiple day thing the longest i think we've been is eight days so let's go on in and uh, you guys can help me hook up the generator and we'll get that all sorted out and uh, see where that takes us ah. Jocko is right. Discipline equals freedom. Because we've taken the time to make sure that the generator's running, that everything's wired up, we have the cords, we've got weeks or months worth of gas, you have the freedom to do what you want to do. You have, in the past, I'd have been running around like, oh, is the generator going to start? Have I tested it? Do I have gas? Blah, blah, blah. That's why being organized is so nice. Uh, the power can go out and go out for a week. It doesn't really matter. No big deal. So this is enough gas with the five gallons that's in here and then the extra five gallon Wavian can to run us probably three or four days because the generator is not super big. It's a 5,000 then it's got a kick down feature on it that when you're not using or have, when there's not a high demand in the power, it'll throttle the engine down. That's the best looking thing I've seen all day. I made up a 30 foot plug or wire uh, to handle the 240 on a twist lock here to a waterproof container on that outside of the house. So that connects to the major circuits and disconnects it from the grid. Then we can take the other end and just plug that directly into the generator with twist lock so it won't vibrate out. Now a 5,000 kW generator is not enough to, to run an average home. You'd want probably at least 1,200, 1,500 would be better. Uh, but it's not a problem because if you have a small generator, you can isolate individual circuits in your house. So what I have done is I've uh, fed the, uh, the water pump, uh, the well pump, um, the water heater, uh, the kitchen circuit, um, the uh, bedrooms uh, with the bathroom, uh, as well as the office with the routers and the internet. So we can have, we can have the bedrooms and the kitchen and the bathroom and all of that stuff going in the internet uh, when the power goes out.
Are you ready, Boss Baby? Yeah. Are you going to click the button? Yeah. Okay, we have to move the camera. <laughs>